Hi, this is Cheryl St. Pierre of Majestic Wire Artworks. Um, in this video, I'm going to teach techniques of making an unwoven bale. And I'm going to do variations of this technique. And um, for bonus, you'll learn how to make a simple uh, brioche. It's not going to be a brioche wrap. It's very similar. I'm not going to go into a brioche wrap, but how to t take a tiny little a uh, delicate teardrop bead that does not fit a 20 gauge wire in it. So I'm going to teach teach that variation and so that's just bonus. <clears throat> now the reason I'm making this video is I had a lady asking me to explain or do a video explaining the bale, how to make the bale and even though I do it in my video I can see how sometimes it would be confusing because of how I started or what's required. So that's why I'm doing a more detailed explanation here. So the first one I'm going to do is a large um, freshwater pearl. It has a large drilled hole, which most pearls don't. This one actually fits a 20 gauge wire. So I thought this would be a perfect... Um, way to show uh, how to make a necklace. I'm just gonna, I'm just using a whole homemade head pin and you could use different head pins. You can make your own homemade pet head pins and you need a minimum of four or five inches of length. I've given, I've actually taken a 10 inch piece of wire and that's way too much, but <clears throat> Anyways, so that's what you need to give yourself to have a comfortable room of making a bale. Um, just, just, it just makes it easier. So the first thing you need to do is figure out um, how much length you need to give the wraps that you desire on your necklace, or you could wing it. But it's always good to practice and figure out where on your round nose pliers is the length you need to get the desired amount of wraps, especially if you're making earrings. Um, but yeah, this is this is a, a necklace, so it really you don't need to match with anything. I'm going to give myself about three quarters of the way up my pliers. And I'm guessing, I'm pretty sure, that I will be able to get three wraps in there. And when you're making a bale, it's the loop always has to go forwards and backwards. So you're gonna start with your measurement that you want for uh, making three wraps. And then you're going to bend it forwards. Okay, so that measurement is for <clears throat> your wraps. And that's all that that is. And then you have to bend it forward. And the reason we're bending it is to center our bale from the side. Because if we didn't, it would make a forward bale. Um, sometimes you might choose that and experiment with that. And I'm also, because it's a fairly delicate necklace, I'm only using the as big as I can get on my round nose pliers to make the bale because it's going to have a delicate chain. Now, if you wanted to put a bigger bulky chain and you had a bigger bulky necklace, I would either use a pencil for my uh, to wrap around or I would use a bale making pliers. I have bale making pliers. I just call it lazy never want to take them out i like to use minimal amount of tools so what you're going to do is you're going to just like a loop uh just like a, a loop for an earring you're going to make your loop exactly the same except for you're wrapping around twice okay so that's all i've done there is wrapped twice instead of once okay so that gives that look of the bale and then so it really is kind of like an optical illusion and now you're going to wrap as neat as possible because it's a necklace you really want it to be nice and neat and tight so your wraps you're going to pull this 
you're going to pull this way. Um, you don't want to go over top of the other wire, but you want that tension to make it really snug. Okay. And I ended up finishing here at the side. And I also want to explain the front of your bale is usually not the nicest looking size side of your bale. It's usually the back. See how that's nicer? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to snip that off there. I'm happy with it there. Um, because it's, I'm going to flip my bale around. Now I'm going to crimp that in. And by the way, I had oh, about six inches left. So, you know, you could even give yourself a six inch workspace. Crimp that in, make it nice and straight. And then you pick which side looks nicest. And then you, you twist it to, so you can twist it. Well, of course you can because the whole thing's twisting. Now, if you had a, a more wire work that you couldn't twist it around like this, the bead just flips, right? If it doesn't do that, then you can still twist it. And just once, so you wouldn't want to do more than once. And there, there is a very simple little necklace that you put a delicate chain on and it has three wraps it shows four even though it's three four looks like three two looks i mean three looks like four and two looks like three okay there there it is and that one's done okay and now the next one i'm going to we're going to pretend that we're making a necklace. I'm not going to actually make it, but we've got a long length of wire. And we're going to make the bale first before we do anything else. So it, it usually always has a long length of wire. So what I'm going to do is because we're pretending that this is uh, a long length of wire and I'm not going to show that with a long length because it always hits the camera but we usually try and find the middle of the wire well depends I mean on your instructions of course and you make a 40 degree I mean a 90 degree bend to make your your bail loop now um, with when you make another bale where it was started at a point like this, that bend after the measurement is um, you're bending backwards. That's what this bend is. So you're just pretending it had a necklace there already. And I'm thinking this is where some people find this confusing is because they don't know, understand how this bend plays in what role it plays so now I'm going to make I want to make a large um, you could use a pencil for this if you wanted to and wrap around twice with a pencil but I'm just using the largest part of my pliers to make as large as I can with my pliers okay and you wrap twice Okay, so what's nice about this is you didn't have to measure the length you needed here for the desired wraps. So um, the necklace that I am, because I'm going to use this little blurb of this video in another video, um, I want it to have nine wraps. This particular necklace needs nine wraps. So that's what we're going to do. And if I was to use long, my long wire to do this, to sh demonstrate it, it would be hitting the, the camera constantly. And 
for those making the necklace with me, it's this isn't going to be easy. So be patient with yourself and do it gradually because you've got three feet of wire fighting you. Okay, so that's four, five, six, seven, eight. And then make sure it's nine. Okay. And there. There you go. So now you could continue on making the rest of your necklace. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to um, make a more delicate pendant out of a tiny brille that has a tiny drill hole. Now this is a moonstone and it measures eight millimeters wide and 10 millimeters tall. So it's really tiny and it doesn't fit a 20 gauge wire in it. And I just have to straighten out my wire. This is 24 gauge and I've got, I've given myself lots of length here. I'm using dead soft copper, raw copper. And actually working it like working it like this isn't going to hurt it because it is extra soft because it's so thin. And you're wondering, how are you going to make a bale out of that? Well, let's sh I'm going to show you. So the first thing we do is put on this little relay. Goodness, my wire's tarnished there. <clears throat> it's funny how it does that in spots. Okay, so this one isn't drilled straight, but that's okay. And we're going to bend it. We're going to make that typical triangle. And we want it to have some movement, so not too tight. And see how I've got it centered? You want it centered like that. And then you're going to try and hold it still. And we're going to twist it. And we're going to twist a long length. We, what we want is to have what twisted them where we want the wraps, as well as enough twist to make our bail loop. And, you know, I'm going to, I forgot to show you something uh, with the other type of bale, because this one we won't be able to do that with, but stay tuned after I'm done this, and I'll just show you um, something, uh, something that I sometimes do, I don't always do. Okay, so is that enough length to do a loop? I'm not sure. I think I'm going to do one more twist. Okay, and now I'm going to bend it because it's thinner wire. I'm only going to go halfway up my round nose pliers and do that bend. I think I've got too much. I'm going to make as large a loop as I possibly can. Oh no, it's pretty good. So from the side it looks like this and hopefully you haven't twisted too long of a length so mine worked out almost absolutely perfect um, there's been times where I have twisted too much length and what I just do is undo it and try, um, try and straighten it out and the best answer is just to um, Try not to over twist because you can always twist more, but untwisting it isn't um, desirable. Okay, so now I've got two wires and I'm wrapping around the base. And you want to try and do this as neat as possible. But I'm going to, what I'm going to do, oh, hopefully. Look at that looks neat. 
Okay, so you can make it have the look of just a simple wrap, or you could make it thicker and do a bit of a messy look, you know. And what you can do is let it decide for you. And I mean, you can go ahead and, um, so this is the front, I would think, that I would pick. Yes, definitely. Um, it's neater from this side, but the wrap is a bit messy. Now, what I'm going to do is try and crimp it in gently to see if I can make it look neat. If I can't, we're going to go with a messy look. So, I'm just trying to show you. And actually, I'm going to leave it. It's, it's not the neatest look, but it's not really messy either. And I'm going to now, I'm going to cut off the excess wire. And I, there, I have lots of extra wire here. Um, excess wire. And crimp it in. So I'm going to actually, because I'm at the back, I'm going to crimp it off really close. Crimp it in. And hopefully you can do it in a way where it's not going to have a rough edge. And mine, mine actually worked out quite nicely. It went messier in the front, and I'm just going to try and smooth that out. In there. So you just do the best you can. And now that's going to make... A really delicate necklace and you see how the 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 loop is a little bit off kilter I'm just gonna uh, gently straighten it because this is 224 gauge wires twisted together it is still a little fragile but you know what it's just as strong as a 20 gauge And there, that's done. It's a pretty little moonstone necklace. I don't know if it, uh, you can see the glint of blue in there. That's the front. Yeah, there. I think we're catching it in, the, in there. Okay, so there it is. All done. And all three types of... Uh, wraps like this. Hopefully it helped you. Let me know. Write comments. Um, I'm going to have this public for a little while and then it will go into um, the techniques videos. Okay, thank you for joining me. God bless and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, I'm back again for a little bit. Now, I meant to um, show you what I other thing you can do with the bail to change the, the looks of it and it's just if you once you found out which is the front spread the two loops apart and if you have to use your plier to do so just gently push in your plier like that and it just gives it a whole different look. Okay, so sorry for the change, but I remember promising you that I would just show you this little um, thing that you want. You can do. You can make it wider apart or or not at all. That's your choice. But it just changes the looks of it, and it's amazing the the change that it really does. Okay, thank you again for joining me for this last little bit. And we will see you in the next one. God bless again and see you later. Bye.